and call the City Council for August 3rd, 2009 to order. First thing on the agenda is always is, is the roll call and determination of quorum. Amber, if you would, please. What? Wa? Here. Okay. Martinson? Martinson? Here. Quaker? Here. Costello? Here. LaCroix? Here. Chapman? Olson? Here. Weifenbach? Here. Kroger? Here. Hadcock? Here. We have a quorum. We have a quorum. Thank you, everyone. Just a reminder, if you have a cell phone or a pager, if you would please put that into the silent mode or turn it off or self-destruct, whatever your preference is, we'd appreciate it. Rule of thumb around here is if it goes off, we hear it. You're buying donuts in two weeks and it can get very expensive. There's a lot of people in the room. Uh, also, we do have speaker request forms. They're over to your left, my right, over at the media table. If you would fill one of those out with your name and the number that you wish to, number the item on the agenda that you wish to speak to, that way, as we make our way down the agenda, we'll make sure that we don't overlook you. With that, next thing on the agenda is our invocation. Roger Gillimore from the YMCA will be offering our, tonight's invocation. If you please rise and then remi remain standing after the invocation for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mayor Hanks, members of the City Council. Thank you for the privilege of doing so. Let's pray. Almighty God and our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we praise you and we give you thanks for this evening. We thank you, Lord, for this gathering together to do city's business. Father, we praise you for the uh, leadership for each one of the members here. We give thanks for their willingness to serve this community. And we pray that you would be with them individually and collectively this evening, that they would uh, have wisdom, that you would guide them, strengthen them, Bless them as they consider issues before the uh, council this evening. Grant to them your grace and your peace, that our community would progress in peace for the benefit of its citizens and for your glory. Be with each one and guide them, we pray, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Next thing on the agenda is the adoption of the agenda. Do we need to add any additional items onto the agenda? If so, please turn on your lights. Any additional items to be added to tonight's agenda? Please turn on your light. Seeing none, Chair would look for a motion to adopt the agenda as published. So we have a motion and second. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We're on to the approval of the minutes. Chair would look for a motion to approve the minutes of the July 20th, 2009 and the July 29th, 2009 City Council meetings. That would have been our special council meeting. We have a motion and a second for approval of the July 20th, 2009 City Council meeting and the Special Council meeting held on July 27, 2009. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Now is the time for rewards and recognitions. We have none tonight, so we will move on to the general public comment period. This is a time for members of the public to discuss or express concerns to the Council on any issue not on the agenda. Action will not be taken at tonight's meeting on any issue not on the agenda except by placement on the agenda by the unanimous vote of the council members present. We did, let's see here, have a couple. First one is from Heather Fortin from MDA. Hi, Heather, nice to see you. Just here? Yep, okay. you just go right there. Now, just so you know, uh, just for those that are, wish to speak, we do have a three minute time. Uh, so if you just watch the lights when it turns yellow, you got about 30 seconds when it turns red, we just ask you to wrap up your remarks. Sounds Heather? good, all right. Thanks, I just wanted to take a few minutes. My name is Heather Fortin and I'm with the Muscular Dystrophy Association here in South Dakota. And I just wanted to come and express my thank you to, the, to Mayor Hanks and the entire city council and the entire city of Rapid City for um, the 2008 fill the boot that the firefighters did for muscular dystrophy this year. Um, this year's event raised $35,641 and it was held back in May 
and it was just a great event again. So I just wanted to thank you, and I have just a little plaque for the city, and um, that's it. I just wanted to thank the city. Rapid City is a great city, and I'm glad that you guys could be a part of this again. Okay, Heather, let me ask the obvious question. How much did Sioux Falls raise? <laughs> Sioux Falls actually raised about $5,000, so oh. yeah. <laughs> so do you have the picture of Mayor Munson from Sioux Falls wearing a Rapid City hat yet? I don't. Oh. As soon as I get that, I'll send that okay. over. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And, you know, first of all, uh, thank you to all the firefighters. I mean, what a tremendous effort. Um, you know, they have taken this project on and, and, and really taken it to heart, and I mean, just tremendous amount of money they raise. Uh, I know a number of the council people are out there uh, including uh, Alderwoman Deb, Deb Hadcock, literally dragging people off the street to donate. So there's a picture on here of Deb. Oh, Deb on the plaque. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's hiding down there, but she she really helped raise a lot of money. So we want to thank her. Yep. Thanks again to the city, the firefighters, the citizens, everyone. So we can't. We serve right over 550 families in the greater South Dakota area, and we wouldn't be able to provide the services we do without events like this. So thank you. Thank you, Heather. You want to just pass it down? We appreciate it, and thank you for coming tonight. And I didn't see, is, is Jim Bustle here or not, Heather? I just want to make sure, you know, Jim's really taking this up. You know, he's one of our firefighters, and he's just really taking this up as a cause. We also have a speaker request form from Sherry Stone. Hi, Sherry. If you, there again, Hi. if you would just identify yourself for the record, and yes, the floor I will. is yours. My name is Sherry Stone, and I live in Bona, Colorado. Um, I was born and raised here in South Dakota, in Rapid City. My father recently passed away. His name was Harvey Buck, and he recently passed away in June. And I had talked to a number of people within the, within the growth management department, and I had requested the use of public land, which is right across the street where my father lived. We are having an auction, and I wanted to use that land to, to have the auction. And they told us that we wouldn't be able to because it was a public land, it was public facility. Um, I'm just questioning that and I just would like to have an answer on that simply because um, there have been garage sales on that land, there have been reunions on that land, and there have been other things that have happened on that land. I doubt very much if any of those people receive permission to use that. Um, I, I personally wanted to get permission and I went around to all of the people within the neighborhood and asked them if it would be okay. There were about 10 neighbors there and I asked them if it would be all right to have the auction and they said it would. But I also wanted to make and get permission um, to use the facility. So when I got, when I got uh, the information back uh, from the growth, growth management department, the city attorney said that we would not be able to use it because it was public land and we could not set up a um, sale, I guess, <laughs> because we, they would be, we would be receiving money from this. Well, my question is, how can you have farmers markets and other um, facilities on public park land, like on Omaha Street? Um, how can they set up and we can't? So I guess that's my question, and I just want to make sure that um, somebody can answer that for me and uh, let us know, because we would like to have this on the 18th of September if we can't. And it would probably just be for, I don't know, part of the day, I would imagine. Okay. So. Thank you. Marcia, did you have something to add? Certainly, this came to my attention last week, and I pulled the plat and reviewed that with uh, City Attorney Jason Green. This uh, is determined to be public right-of-way, and as such, uh, that would be not within the authority for the city to issue the right for an individual to use that public right-of-way for uh, private sure. business such as this. Yeah. Typically, the appropriate process to actually get that would be actually place an item on legal and finance. As a visitor's item, it, it really doesn't fall within uh, our guidelines to actually act on something tonight unless it's actually on the agenda. Uh, so if you'd like to discuss at the appropriate action, and I suppose, are you living in town now? No. Oh, okay. I'm only here for the week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the appropriate uh, uh, course would actually be to take this to legal and finance, have that discussion there, and then see if the council would move that on to the city council. So okay. at, at this point, as I mentioned earlier, no action would be taken on any item tonight if it's not on the agenda, and this was not on the agenda. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Any additional items under general public comment period? This is for items not on the, tonight's agenda. Any additional comments? If not, we will move on. We're on to the non-public hearing items. This is items 1 through 74 inclusive. 
Chair, look for motion to open the public comment on, on items 1 through 56 inclusive. 1 through 56 inclusive, please. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We do have a couple speaker request forms. There again, we do time this to three minutes. Uh, we have a speaker request form on item number 25 from Gene Kesloff. Gene, hang on one second. I need to call the vote, don't I? I got disrupted. All those in favor of the public hearing, opening the public hearing items one through 56, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, motion, motion passes, thank you. Now, Gene, if you would please identify yourself for the record, please. Gene, Gene Olson Kasloff. The Rapid City Historic Preservation Commission was asked to find a solution to mitigate the damage that has already been done to the historic property at 1819 West Boulevard. The homeowner will be required to add millions to the inappropriate windows that were installed without a building permit. Because of the cumulative damage done to this home, it will never be contributing again. Unfortunately, it sits at the southern entrance to the historic district, right across the street from the sign that says, West Boulevard Historic District. More than that, while numerous hours were spent by city council, city staff, the preservation commission, trying to work with the homeowner these past weeks, and while there was a stop work order issued on further work to the original historic portion of the house, the homeowner installed another window, altering the size of the opening to accommodate it. Somehow, I, don't, I didn't know I needed a building permit, just doesn't seem to fit this time. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. We also have a speaker request form from Peter Schmidt. 1819 West Boulevard, item number 25. And there again, Mr. Schmidt, if you would just identify yourself for the record. Uh, my name is Peter Schmidt. Uh, Got to give me a minute. That just got dropped to me right there. Um, we, we did meet with Leland Finance since the last meeting. Um, we, had, we had the opportunity to explain what we did and why we did it. Um, we uh, explained the other options we considered. Uh, we voted. Uh, there was only one person in opposition uh, to the compromise that we were, we were all really content with. Uh, Gene voted uh, for the compromise. Uh, Gene Kesloff voted for that. Um, the other window they're talking about, I, I don't know, I emailed Karen Bowman before I did any work uh, on the house and, and she emailed me back that work that didn't require a building permit didn't need to go through historic preservation. Um, we installed windows that, that uh, we did not need to alter the rough opening on. No one's been by the house to look at what the work we did. Um, yeah, it's it's fine. We didn't we didn't do it. I, I would never be able to find a contractor to to do that for me now, and I'm not an idiot. I mean, I would never ever uh, think of opening that can of worms. Uh, it's been a long four months. We've met uh, uh, four times with historic preservation, uh, three with legal and finance, three with city council. Um, we have learned a lot. Um, I I I don't think we're damaging the home. Uh, you know, there's there's a there's let's say four homes right by that historic preservation sign and. And others have all been added on to. Um, it's it's fine, guys. It's going to look great. Uh, we, we're not breaking any rules intentionally. We I mean, we need to get this over. I know it sounds trivial. Windows. It's kind of funny. A lot of people joke with me every single day of my life, but uh, it's not. It's really serious to us. Um, it's been very stressful. Uh, it's. Uh, I, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Uh, what what we've had to go through. And now to know that that my neighbors don't like. Um, what we considered an improvement to the house. Um, it's, it's, it's sad. I don't, I don't enjoy, um, I don't enjoy living there as much as I did four months ago, uh, knowing that, that if they want to, they can give you this kind of tough time uh, when, you, when, when you are trying to do the best you can uh, for the neighborhood. And for every one person that stands up here and says that we are doing the wrong thing, I, I, could, I could give you a hundred people. I, I, I can't even walk down the boulevard. I can't open my email. I can't go to a restaurant without someone uh, commenting on this issue. Um, and that's it, I, I will be here. I apologize if I got off track, but I, to, to, to listen to someone say that we damaged the house, really, uh, we're, we are trying our best, guys. So if you have any questions, don't delay, please ask me. Um, I, please, thank you. Thank you, we also have a speaker request form from Micah Schmidt, item number 25, 1819 West Boulevard. There again, Mike, if you just identify yourself for yeah. the record, please. I'm, I'm Micah Schmidt, 
And I just really wanted to stand up here and um, to thank Historic Preservation for meeting with us. I felt like we had a very productive meeting and that we came up with a plan um, that we feel is very doable. All of the things that they requested uh, and the compromises we made are all, all fine with us and we are glad to do each of the things that, they, that we talked about. Um, we just hope that you agree with their recommendation that they made and with legal and finances recommendation um, that we have explored all feasible and prudent alternatives. Thank you. Thank you. I do not see any additional speaker request forms on item one through 56. Does anyone else wish to speak on any item one through 56 inclusive? If not, the chair would look for a motion to close the public comment period. A have a mo oh, I'm sorry, okay. Motion and a second. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, motion passes. Uh, Alderman Sam Quaker, you had your light on? Thank you, Mayor. I know that this is unusual and the council uh, doesn't often add items to the agenda, but we did have someone that probably didn't understand the process that drove up here from Colorado. And I would like to add, I realize it needs a unanimous vote, but I would like to add an item uh, 71A to allow her, her request to be considered or at least so that we can obtain more information and direct it to be added to a, a committee agenda. Okay, we, we have a motion and a second. Do you have a topic? Uh, yes, it's regarding the use of the property that she was asking you to not know the address. Let me get the address. Don't have an address. And I was, I'm just put on here, Sherry Stone. 71A. Okay, now in order to place this on the agenda, for action, it needs to be a unanimous vote. If, if it's not a unanimous vote, Alderman Quaker, you can place this on the agenda for discussion purposes only. Yes, sir. Everyone clear on the motion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Motion, uh, motion fails because it's not a unanimous vote, so it will be on the agenda as 71A as a discussion item only. Okay? Yeah. Yes. Jason. Since the motion failed, it cannot be added to the agenda at all tonight. It could be placed on a future legal and finance agenda. You know, that is correct. That is correct. Because it would have had been added when we're adopting the agenda. Okay, very good. Um, my suggestion is to uh, request that to be. Motion, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see. I'm going to test my parliamentary procedure. Since it is required to be unanimous vote of the council, the only person it, it would take someone from the prevailing side, and since the prevailing side was the no vote, that person would have to agree, Jason, how am I doing? Is that correct on parliamentary procedure? Okay. So unless, unless the, the no vote uh, agrees to reconsider, then the matter is closed and we moved on. Okay. We move on. Can I ask for clarification? Sure. Mayor. Yep. I Dad, you seconded the motion. You intended to vote, to vote against it, to not? No, it was Karen Olds. Oh, Alder Women Karen Olds. I'm against. sorry. I misheard the okay. vote. Okay. Very good. We move on. Yes? Go ahead. Alderman Ron Kroger. Is it appropriate to have a motion? To, uh, can we, we can't even put a motion on the floor to take this legal finance? It's not in the rule. No. I guess my comment would be to the Stones, if you want to contact me tomorrow morning sometime, I would gladly uh, put it on the agenda for legal and finance. Yep. Okay. Very good. Let's see. We close the public comment period. We are onto the consent calendar. Items 1 through 56. Does the chair wish to pull any items 1 through 56 inclusive? If so, please turn on your light. Karen, did you want one pulled? you have your light on? Okay, let's, uh, Alderman Malcolm Chapman. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to pull item 32, please. 32. 
Alderwoman Karen Olson, do you want one pulled? Okay, sorry, your light was on there. Marsh Elkins. 22 and 47, please. 22 and 47. Alderman Aaron Costello. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If we, uh, I guess I'll seek advice from legal here. Uh, if we move to suspend the rules, would we be able to put the item on the agenda the uh, regarding the property of Sherry Stone? Jason? What you're really talking about here is the, the open meeting requirements. You've had a proposed agenda published 24 hours in advance. Your rules very clearly on the face of the agenda say you can't add anything except by unanimous consent of the council. So I think you have an open meeting problem if you attempt to do that, even if the, the spirit of Robert's Rules of Order would allow you to suspend your rules to do that. So my advice is not to go down that road. Fair enough. Okay. So far, from the consent calendar, items 1 through 56 inclusive, we are going to pull item 22, 32, 47. Did we need to pull item 41? Item also 41. So, so far we have four items. Any additional items we pulled from the consent calendar? Uh, Alderman Quaker. 13 and 14, Mayor. 13 and 14. Any additional? So far, we have a consent calendar as item 1 through 56 inclusive. We will be pulling item 13, 14, 22, 32, 41, 47. Any others? If not, Chair would look for a motion to approve the consent calendar. So items moved. 1 through 56 with the exception of 13, 14, 22, 32, 41, 47. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. <coughs> we will go to item 13, and that is a public works item. Alderman Kroger, you're at the wrong end here. Could you read that in for us, please? Item number 13 is to authorize Mayor and Finance <coughs> Officer to sign a maintenance agreement renewal with Johnson Controls Incorporated for the energy plant in the amount of $18,100. Move approval. We have a motion, second for approval. Any discussion on that motion? Let's go to Alderman Sam Quaker. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have a question for a public works director relating to both of these uh, items. Uh, during the construction phase of the Civic Center, there was, there was some discussion about uh, the costs of, of the sole source um, contracts or bids uh, with, uh, with, for the energy plant because the, the plant was designed in such a way that really only one servicer could, could do the work. Uh, I was just wondering if, if we're on track for the redesign of the energy plant to make sure that the controls are set up so that it can be more competitive. Robert Ellis, Public Works Director. When we do go forward into the, the reconstruction of the energy plant, we will consider that. I have a little bit of concerns about that because um, uh, a majority of the buildings that we do facilitate the heating and air conditioning is Johnson controlled, and it's nice to have that compatibility between systems. But when we do go into the design of that, there will be future discussions with the council on how to move forward with Johnson controls or any other vendor out there for that matter. And these are one-year contracts. These are one-year contracts. These are one-year contracts. Yep. Thank you. I support both items. Yep. Very good. Motion on the floor is for approval. Item number 13, which is authorized mayor and the finance officer to sign a maintenance agreement, a renewal with Johnson Controls for an amount of $18,100. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 14, Mr. Kroger, if you would, please. Item number 14 is to authorize Mayor and Finance Officer to sign a maintenance agreement renewal with Johnson Controls Incorporated for the Milo Barber Transportation Center in the amount of $5,345. Move approval. We have a motion and second for approval. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We're on to item number 22, please, and that is Mr. Kroger. Could you please read in item number 22? Item number 22 is to approve a request by the City of Rapid City to consider an application for an amendment to adopt a comprehensive plan to revise the major street plan by eliminating, adding, and realigning collector streets uh, located west of I-190 I and north of Omaha Street. Uh, I would move approval. Do we have a second, please? We have a motion and a second for approval. Discussion on that motion. Let's go to Alderwoman Karen Olson. Thank 
Thank you. I just wanted to have uh, Marsha review briefly the map. I just wanted to make sure I understood um, how those streets were changing. I think I do based on the t comparison maps, but I just want to make sure. Um, this is a neighborhood that is enjoying, in my view, some real positive change. And I just want to make sure that we continue to be cognizant of the neighborhood safety and um, not creating any additional stress in that neighborhood by a heavy traffic. Marcia, you ready to put it up on the board? <coughs> Go ahead. And again, at some point, we need to make sure we open the public hearing, take any public hearing comments on this particular item um, because it was should have been appeared on the public hearing portion of it. Marshall, that's a good point. Why don't we do it? The reason this was actually pulled was because of the fact that this did need to be a public hearing, and uh, it was actually in the consent calendar, which gave no opportunity for people's uh, public input. So, Jason, your recommendation is we go ahead and open the public comment period so we can hold the... That would certainly meet the requirements of the law, yes. I would withdraw my motion. Then. I think we can leave his motion on the floor, can we not? For approval, and then just go ahead and open public comment, close it, and then act on the motion? I would recommend that you acknowledge the withdrawal okay. so it's clear that the council hasn't taken a position prior to the public hearing. Very good. So is that right? Is that that's, that is all right with the seconder? Is that correct? Okay. Motion is, is there any objection to withdrawing the motion? Any objection? <coughs> Chair will consider the motion withdrawn. We do not have a motion on the floor. Chair will look for a motion to open the public comment period. So moved. Thank you. Any <coughs> discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Marsha, why don't you give a presentation, then we'll take questions. Thank you. This is a side-by-side -side comparison. On the left-hand side, you will see the green streets, which are collector streets in the area that is to the west of I-190. Um, on the right-hand side, you will see that the proposal is to remove a number of those streets. I-190 kind of comes right in through here. Um, <coughs> those roads have been identified as collector streets. Uh, previously, however, after discussions with the public works staff and the growth management staff, we were in concurrence that because of the limited amount of development in that area and the fact that it's a somewhat secluded area, we did not see that there would be significant growth that would demand the need for the collector roads to be constructed. The public works department right now is looking at sewer and water projects in the area that would require that the streets be reconstructed, which is what triggered the discussion. As such, um, the staff recommends that this, these streets be removed from the major street plan. The Future Land Use Committee and the Planning Commission have concurred and make that recommendation to you. So our recommendation is to approve the amendment which would remove those streets from collector status. They would continue to be streets. Uh, I had uh, several people contact me that were concerned their street would go away. It will not. It just will no longer be identified as a collector and would not require it be built to a three-lane facility. Okay. Very good. Well, let's take public comment. Anyone from the audience would like to speak to item number 22 for the public hearing? Anyone from the audience? Now, the chair would look for a motion to close the public comment period or the public hearing for item number 22. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Now it would be appropriate for a motion to approve. I would make that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second for approval. Any discussion on that motion? Karen, yes. let's go to Alderwoman Karen Olson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, with that understanding, and that clarifies that the streets continue, but they are not going to be collectors. I'm in support of this, and I. It, it is operating the way I was understanding, and I think it is beneficial to the neighborhood because this is a neighborhood that is enjoying some really very positive growth, and I. Um, want it to continue as a solid residential neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Motion on the floor is for approval. Item number 22, which is an amendment to the adopt the comprehensive plan to revise major street plan by eliminating, adding, and realigning collector streets. Any further discussion? Motion on the floor is for approval. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. We are on to item number 32. Alderman Quaker, could you please read that in? Item number 32 is to approve new special event application process move approval. We have a motion and a second for approval. Discussion on that motion. Let's go to Alderman Malcolm Chapman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. After some discussion with uh, the police department and others, I, I'm going to make a substitute motion to send this item back to legal and finance 
um, August 12th legal and finance. Okay, we have a motion and a second to send this back to legal and finance on August 12th. Any discussion on that motion? Karen, did you want to speak to that? Let's go to Alderwoman Karen Olson. Thank you very much. Um, I listened to the hard work that um, Lieutenant Johns has put into <coughs> to bringing about some resolution that makes this process more clear, but I am in agreement there's some additional tweaking that we could do that will make it operate even better because our city is enjoying some growth and growth in events and we need to be able to handle those um, globally and I, so I think this is a good change and I think it'll be a good discussion. Thank you. Very good. The motion on the floor is to send this back to legal and finance at the August 12th meeting. Any further discussion on that motion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed. Motion passes. Item number 41, Alderman Quaker, could you please read that in? Item number 41 is to authorize staff to amend section 3.04.090 subsection B of the municipal code from 15,000 to 25,000 yield to the floor. Move for approval. We have a motion, second for approval, discussion on that motion. Jason, I think what we need to do is, since staff can't actually amend the ordinance, what is the language that you propose? I think a couple words just got dropped out of this. I think it should read, authorize staff to draft an ordinance to amend and okay. keep the rest of the language. Is that right with the motion maker? And the second? Yes. Okay, very good. Everyone clear on the motion? And that is to direct staff to come back with an amendment to section 3.04.090B uh, to raise the dollar amount from 15,000 to 25,000. Everyone clear on the motion? Si yep, I'll draft. In discussion, seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item number 47, please. Alderman Kroger, could you please read that in? Item 47 is to deny without prejudice a request by Dream Design International Incorporated for a preliminary plat located at 1851 Discovery Circle. Uh, my motion would be to deny without prejudice. We have a motion and a second to deny item number 47 without prejudice. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. That does take us to the end of the consent calendar. We're on to the continued consent calendar items. This is items 48 through 56, 48 through 56. Does anyone from the staff or from the council wish to have any item 48 through 56 inclusive fold? No? Nope. No takers? Very good. The chair would look for a motion to approve the consent, continued consent calendar items, item 48 through 56 inclusive per the recommendation dates in the packet. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. That does take us to the end of the consent. Continue consent items. We are on to the non-consent items. Items 57 through 74. The chair would look for a motion to open the public comment period for items 57 through 74 inclusive. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We do have a couple speaker request forms. Item number 60, Vern Ostrovo. And there again, Vern, uh, if you'd identify yourself for the record, we do time this, so you'll have three minutes. Just watch the lights. When it hits yellow, you got about 30 seconds. Thank you, Mayor Hanks and uh, member of the council. I'm Vern Osterlo, director of the construction management of the Rep City Regional Hospital. I'm here to ask for support of uh, item number uh, 60 to approve an ordinance amendment which would allow sales of medical supplies and equipment rental in a uh, <clears throat> office commercial district, zoning district. Now most durable medical equipment is obtained by a patient through written orders by a physician, much less like your pharmaceutical prescriptions. Reb Regional Hospital currently has uh, retail outlets in Deadwood and Spearfish and it's our intent to bring the same business to uh, Rapid City. This business has a unique clientele or patients with very little on-site uh, on retail sales. The business has a sizable equipment display area and storage. Less than 25% of this business gross sales are sold on-site and these items are usually bath safety, lift chairs, self-help items, canes, walkers, breast pumps, wheelchairs, and so on. Another 25% of the 
gross retail sales are sales orders received by telephone, fax, or the computer, and these are all delivered to the patients at their residence, at the hospital, or to a nursing facility. And then the bulk of the business, over 50% of the business, is the ordered rental equipment, which is delivered to the patient, and the bulk of the patient is oxygen uh, tanks and uh, oxygen concentrators. So 75% of this durable medical equipment business is really uh, delivered from the, uh, the site to the patient. Your growth management staff reports states that the office commercial district allows a full range of residential development and a limited commercial use such as art galleries, medical facilities, laboratories, libraries, museums, and office buildings. The office commercial district allows medical facilities with pharmacies as an accessory use. Now remember patients obtain these durable medical equipment by physician written orders similar to pharmaceuticals, but the durable medical equipment business would have considerably less traffic, on-site traffic compared to the medical facility with a pharmacy. At the present time, the hospital owns a, a vacant building in uh, the office commercial zoning district, and as good stewards of the community's hospital's money, it would be more economical to utilize a, a hospital-owned building in the office commercial build, uh, district than to lease property in the general commercial zoning. I ask for you, your support to amend the ordinance to allow the sale of medical supplies and equipment rental as a conditional use in an office commercial district. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Officer Lou. We also have a speaker request form from Jim Didier, Presidential Plaza Partners, item number 71. Again, Mr. Didier, if you just identify yourself for the record, please. Jim Didier, partner, Presidential Plaza Development. Mr. Mayor and distinguished council members, I believe this is really a twofold issue, parking and downtown economic revitalization. Back in the 50s, Rapid City had a bigger parking problem than today because every retail and commercial item for sale for a trade area encompassing over 50 miles was available in downtown Rapid City. People found a way to handle their parking issue anyway. Today's issue isn't public parking as much as employee parking. Employees are taking available, close, convenient street parking spaces away from the retail buying public. In the 70s, as more retail moved out of the city center to Rushmore Mall, there was a huge out-migration of local retailers from the downtown. This is the start of the declining economy of downtown Rapid City. Our presidential plaza project will give the city both the economic stimulus shot it needs and provide additional public parking. The pain of the initial injection or the immediate loss of city parking revenues to the city budget will be more than offset by the three to five fold increase by the cash generated in the private sector, otherwise known as our income generator. If after we complete our feasibility study and there is an identified need for an additional parking other than which our plans provide for, we can add additional parking as we stated previously. Most of your constituents have probably told you we have a parking problem downtown. The option of building only a standalone parking structure is but a short-term remedy to a smaller issue. The larger and more potentially devastating problem is that our downtown's declined economic condition continues to deteriorate. Once again, our goal is to enhance our downtown activities to give people another destination point to shop, relax, and comfortably live. Presidential Plaza would offer more conference, meeting, and multi-purpose business use and this would provide enhanced resources to our tourism and convention industries, both of which are green. Presidential Plaza offers a 5,500 uh, square foot state-of-the-art health facility, including the fitness machines, workout space, racquetball courts, and locker facilities. There would be a, f a rooftop city view restaurant included for the public to enjoy or other amenities identified in the feasibility study. Presidential Plaza offers more retail space which would help reduce the initial impact of the loss of the city of parking revenues. Presidential Plaza includes more spaces for condominiums, increasing the downtown economic tax base through property valuations and private ownership. Finally, the Presidential Plaza building's name establishes a great promotional tie-in to our city statues, which are present on most of our downtown street corners. Currently, these beautiful statues are a tremendous draw for tourists and local residents alike. 
Presidential Plaza is in your, the presence of presidents. If you could just uh, take the next 10, 15 seconds to wrap it up. I yeah. would do that. Thank you. I would ask you to consider these points and realize when you give a shot of public economic stimulus funding to the private sector, it will be accompanied by an initial pain of revenue loss to the city. The recovery will come in the form of downtown business, and the best way to do that is with our Presidential Plaza. Thank you very much. Thank you. We also have a speaker request form from Rob Slimgen, item number 71. Again, Rob, if you'd identify yourself for the record, please. I'm Rob Schlingen with the Presidential Plaza Partnership, LLC. Honorable Mayor Hanks and distinguished council members, let me be brief tonight. I just wanted to thank you for the opportunity you've given us to present our project to you, the time and effort that you've given to this project, not just our project, but the entire process is greatly appreciated. You have shown an, an outgoing concern for getting the best project for downtown and the citizens of Rapid City, and I applaud you for that. I will be happy to answer any questions as this process continues, and again, best of luck on the process. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We do not have any additional speak request forms on items 57 through 74 inclusive. Anyone else wish to speak on any item 57 through 71 inclusive? If not, the chair would look for a motion to close the public comment period. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, motion passes. We're on to ordinances. <coughs> Item number 57, Alderman Quaker, if you would please. Item 57, a second reading of ordinance 5521, an ordinance creating a sidewalk vendor permit by amending subsection 12.20.020 of the municipal code, move approval of second reading. We have a motion and a second. Let's just make sure we have the right motion for recommendation of approval of revised ordinance. Is that, Marshall, what you're looking for? And that was the motion? Yes. Very good. And that's right with the seconder. Okay, very good. Motion on the floor is for approval of the revised ordinance. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 58, please. Item 58 is second reading of ordinance 5522, an ordinance creating a sidewalk vendor license by adding chapter 5.56 to the Rapid City Municipal Code, move approval of the revised ordinance. We have a motion and a second to approve second reading of ordinance 5522 for approval of the revised ordinance. Any discussion on that motion? Let's go to Alderman Sam Quaker. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I support this ordinance, but I have a question regarding the process, and perhaps Marsha Elkins can assist me on answering this question. Is there a reason, Marsha, why we, we would take the license approval directly to the council rather than going through the uh, committee process or planning commission process first. Marcia? I guess I can't really answer that question. We certainly could take it through the committee. That was the desire of the council. Alderman Craig, you still have the floor, sir. I think it makes sense, and I don't know that it needs an ordinance amendment to do this, but I think it makes sense that a request of this nature start <laughs> off um, instead of just simply being added to a Monday night agenda, that it should be added to a committee agenda so that the proper vetting of the request can be done before it gets to, to Monday night. Okay. I'm going to go to Jason Green. Jason, do we need to state that specifically in the ordinance, or would it, uh, by the sheer fact that anything that typically comes to the city council typically gets placed on legal and finance anyway? What's your recommendation? I don't think you need to change the ordinance on this. The typical process would be to take it to legal and finance, and by analogy, I'd point to the alcohol licenses. Um, you know, th those typically go through the process. So, okay. Well, then quickly, stoke the floor, sir. Uh, the other thing is, is if if a sidewalk license is a vendor license is being granted for a certain location downtown, does this ordinance require notification of surrounding businesses? Let's go to Marsha Elkins, Growth Management Director. Actually, the, the locational aspects are addressed through the previous item, number 57, which was the second reading of ordinance number 5521. Um, as part of that, no, there is no notice to the surrounding property owners. Because it's in public right of way, would that be the? Correct. Okay. Alderman Quaker, you still have the floor, sir. Uh, that could create some interesting uh, dialogue. But that's already that's already been approved. But I I do hope that 
when these requests come forward that the council recognizes the sensitivity of approving these licenses and that uh, there would be an effort to solicit opinion of the downtown uh, association. Very good. Thank you. Additional speakers, and I'm going to apologize to the council. The lights are sort of going goofy on us tonight. That's why I'm sort of jumping around here. We're getting some blanks and so forth. Let's go to Alderwoman Karen Olson. Did you have any comments? Okay. Very good. Motion on the floor is for approval of the revised ordinance, ordinance number 5522. This is second reading. Any additional discussion? Additional discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item number 59, please. Of ordinance 5524, an ordinance re revising conditional uses within the heavy industrial zoning district by amending 17.24 of the municipal code move approval of first reading. We have a motion and a second for first reading of ordinance 5530. Any discussion on that motion? So to Alderwoman Deb Hadcock. Um, can somebody explain um, why we're changing the heavy industrial conditional use permit? Let's go to Marsha Elkins, Growth Management Director. The two items that are being added back in are wind energy systems and microcell wireless antennas. They were inadvertently overwritten by other sections and dropped out, so this is really a housekeeping issue. They'd previously been discussed fully um, and just accidentally got overwritten through the codification process. So they will be added back in to reflect the original intention of the Planning Commission and City Council. So if we put heavy industrial in an area, can we put conditional uses on that based on change of use? Marcia? No. Any property that's heavy industrial has a list of permitted uses. So someone could come and get a building permit for those uses. And there is another list of conditional uses. So any of those conditional uses can be allowed if they obtain the proper permit. So if we change, um, like on 60, if we change heavy industrial, how we want things in heavy industrial for <coughs> conditional uses, if we wanted something to be changed, just like the wind energy and stuff, we could do that? Marcia? You could limit the conditional uses in the heavy industrial, but it would affect every heavy industrially zoned property without, within the community, all throughout the community. Right, which I understand that. I guess um, I'm just looking at um, exceptions, like on 60, so thank you. Okay. Motion on the floor. Whoops, I'm sorry. This, oh. Okay, very good. Motion on the floor is for approval of first reading ordinance 5524. Motion on the floor is for approval. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, motion passes. Item 60, please. Item 60 is first reading of ordinance 5530 and ordinance amending section 17.40.030 of the municipal code by adding a new subsection 17.40.030L to allow sales of medical supplies and medical equipment rental as a conditional use in the office commercial zoning district move approval. We have a motion and a second for approval. Any discussion on that motion? Let's go to Alderwoman Deb Hatcock. Um, just a question. It says on here that the um, negative impacts on the residential develop developments could result in com compromising the standard of living as well as creating safety concerns due to increase in commercial traffic, typically generated by retail services. Also, if I'm correct, um, the staff doesn't recommend that this be approved. Can um, somebody explain, Marsha, maybe? Let's go to Marsha okay. Elkins, Growth Management. Again, the original recommendation by the staff was to deny the request uh, and to make it very limited where um, certain things could be allowed when it was an accessory to a uh, medical office. However, the Planning Commission has recommended to you approval, and that is the recommendation that comes forward, is to amend the ordinance to allow this use as conditional use in the office commercial. I guess. That's where I'm going is um, not that I think the medical facility is a bad thing. It's the truck services and the thing that will be coming um, in commercial use next to residential. Um, I know if I live next to it and they do have to deliver this um, materials, wheelchairs and things like that, depending on how much they sell, um, I don't think it would be fair to have a lot of deliveries and truck usage right next to residential. So. Um, I'll be voting against that in this uh, amendment, not that I'm against the me medical facility. I'm just looking out for the residential area and I'm reading what's on this. Um, it's not consistent with office commercial. 
And uh, again, if I'm looking at this right, uh, staff, I think, had it right uh, in this area. So it's just to pre protect the residential area. Thank you. Let's go to Alderman Ron Weifenbach. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in part of this discussion, it was brought or it was mentioned that if this was a pharmacy operating in this area, that would be appropriate. Uh, I'd like to ask Marsha that question. Okay, Marsha. Again, there is some uh, uses that are already allowed in the office commercial. Let me go back to that section. Didn't know it was going to be a quiz on the zoning ordinance and every single regulation here, so let me double check that for you. Section 1740030 is the conditional uses in that district. Um, and in that district, there are a number of items that are allowed, uh, including hospitals and sanitariums. Again, then also in the permitted uses, medical facilities, not including veterinary establishments, with pharmacies allowed as an accessory use to permitted medical facilities. So if there was a medical office and they were dispensing um, pills as part of that medical office and you took home your prescription with you from that office, that would be uh, a permitted use. Thank you. You okay. also mentioned veterinarians? No, the exception of veterinarians. Except not, in, not included. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to vote in favor of this item. I, I'm, that is, that, this is in my ward in my neighborhood and I've visited this several times. I've visited it when there's people that have lived there and it's now vacant it, it is across the street or in close vicinity to a, a large large elderly folks home and there's quite a few of them as you go down the street down towards minnesota street i could see this being a very appropriate usage in that area i have less less concern about the delivery trucks are usually small uh, oxygen oxygen tanks and those types of things are small i think they usually simply use vans to to do that i don't think there's going to be a real big issue with traffic in and out there it's it's right next to fifth street uh, the in and out access to Fifth Street. If I recall, you drive up on, I believe it's uh, Anna Marie or Alta Vista, and it's right there. There's garages there. It's, it's a perfect facility for this type of use. I, I think that uh, uh, I can support this, and I think that the people in that community would support it. I haven't had any negative feedback uh, from this. It's close to. It's in close vicinity to the hospital and the medical facilities there. I think it's. This is a uh, hands down. Uh, exception to the rule here. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go to Alderman Karen Olson, who has not had the opportunity to speak yet. <coughs> this is first reading, but my question would be if the truck traffic that Alderman Hadcock has referenced, is there a way to limit the size of vehicles that would use this as a part of the conditional use? Marcia? Yes, um, through the conditional use permit process, if this ordinance is approved, then any specific site that wanted to operate this kind of facility would have to be submitted. So I need to make it clear to the council that this ordinance amendment is not for any site. There is no one location that it affects. It affects every office commercial district across the community. At the time the conditional use permit application came forward, then the issues in terms of where the access was, what kind of trucks were accessing it, those kinds of issues could be reviewed and stipulations to mitigate the impact could be addressed as part of that process. Okay. Thank you very much. That's very helpful. And okay. Any additional discussions? Let me ask a procedural question. Does anyone wish to speak for Alderwoman Hadcock speaks for a second time? If not, Alderwoman Deb Hadcock. I guess the biggest issue with me is not just the traffic. It's making exceptions for different people on what we do, where some people we just shut them down and other people we do exceptions for them. So um, it's nothing personal against this company or anything else. I think even if it's across the street, it increases um, the traffic flow. And that area, I think, does have a lot of traffic. In fact, they asked me if I would put a light. A few of them did in the bottom of that hill. So. Um, I have had a few complaints on it for traffic. Um, again, uh, making exceptions so we can do medical supplies or something else. We don't make exceptions for everybody else so they can get their stuff through. Um, I think it's wrong. And if we can do that, I would hope that uh, growth management and uh, our 
city council people could make exceptions on some of the rules so other people can get their developments and their things through as well. Thank you. Thank you. Motion on the floor is for approval of first reading of ordinance 5530. Any additional discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion passes. Let's do a roll call just real quick. I'm not sure. I think I wrote two or three. Wa? Aye. Martinson? No. Boyker? Aye. Costello? Aye. McCray? Aye. Chapman? Weifenbach? Aye. Kroger? Aye. Hadcock? Okay. Motion passes 8 to vote. That was first reading. That will be back in front of us. Item number 61, please. Item 61 is first reading of Ordinance 5531. An ordinance amending <coughs> Section 17.06, the Municipal Code, for a rezoning within the described uh, property as requested by the City from No Use District to General Ag uh, District, located at the intersection of East St. Patrick and South Dakota Highway 44, we will approve of first reading. We have a motion and a second. Uh, first reading on ordinance number 5531. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. That does also take us to the growth management department items. Item number 62, Alderman Kroger, if you'd read that in for us, please. Item 62 is to authorize the mayor finance officer to sign a waiver right to protest a future assessment for the installation of a side, sidewalk along East Highway 44 as they abut uh, located east of the intersection of Center Street and East Highway 44. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second for approval to authorize Mayor and Finance Officer to sign a waiver of right to protest. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. That takes us to the Legal and Finance Committee items. Item number 63, Alderman Quaker, if you would please. Item 63. Item 63 is to approve revised City of Rapid City Technology Resource Usage Policy <coughs> yield to the floor. Can we have a motion, please? Move for approval. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second for approval. Discussion on that motion. Let's go to Alderman Malcolm Chapman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can we get a um, explanation as to what the revisions are? Sure. Mr. Tome, if you would, please. Hi, Kevin Tome, Community Resources Director. And the re revision is on uh, page two under the email usage. it would be the last bullet point. And I can read it if you'd like. Or if it says, whenever information technology, parentheses IT, has a request to view the email of a city employee or city elected official, a log will be kept by the IT officer noting the person making the request, date of request, and email account viewed. The exception is in the case of routine computer or network server maintenance. Alderman Chapman, you still have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted that read into the public record as to what that revision was. I think it's a good change that we keep a log um, but I, I still have some concerns that, um, that there is some inspection from time to time of email messages. Okay, any further discussion? Let's go to Alderwoman Deb Hadcock. Just a question on our emails. Um, do all our emails have to go to the city, uh, city website and not to different areas? Like some people have um, other emails. Can people email city business off a different website like if I have Deb and Hads and I have them send it to Deb and Hads which I put all my email for the city does it legally just have to be a city website it can't go like if John wants to email me on Deb and Hads he can't yes he everything has to go through the city to be legal let's go to Kevin Tome you want to if I understand your question right you're not mandated to use the city email if that's your question if it's city business I'll defer to our city attorney, but I don't believe so. Thank you. Let's go to Jason Green, city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This, this policy in no way prevents an elected official from using their personal email accounts. However, to the extent that um, anything that you're doing is city related, I, had, I encourage elected officials to use city equipment for that, but there's no legal requirement that you do so. If you want to use your own, you certainly can. So in order to be open public record, 
um, for people to um, see our emails or do what we do on city business it doesn't have to go to a personal it can go to a personal email as well as the city either one let's go to Jason Green city attorney thank you mr. mayor I don't believe that the email account would make a difference for purposes of open records law it whether it's a, a, a message that's sent to an alderman's account at rcgov.org or to their personal account it's still correspondence of the elected official and therefore I think it's uh, covered by the exemption in the open records law okay yeah. alderman heck you still have the floor ma'am I guess I'm not understanding because I thought when we were talking about open public records that in order to keep track or or make sure everybody's on the same page in a sense on city business that we needed to make sure and I thought I had asked Scott that before we went that it had to be on a city email site not um, when people I could have Joe and John send it to my Devin head so people couldn't see it on my my um, city website email I'm gonna go Jason Green city attorney well if I, if I understand the question the question is who has access to the emails yes regardless of whether it's to a city account or to a personal account I believe that the new open records law shields those communications from release because they're correspondence and correspondence is specifically exempt from the open records provisions Alderman Hadcock you still have the floor ma'am I guess I'm not understanding because I thought if it was city business and I'll keep saying this if it's city business I thought it had to stay on a city website for open public records you're saying that they can send it wherever and um, what if we decided to go look at their emails or look go look at their website and you say I thought they told us they could look at all of them and they could look at my Devin Hads and everything because I was getting city business on there and getting emails on that website let's go to Jason Green city attorney I think we're, we're uh, confusing two different things one is the open records requirements and the other is the possibility that emails might have to be disclosed in litigation and they're very different analysis the reason I recommend that elected officials keep all of their city business on city computers is to prevent anyone from ever asking for a personal computer of an elected official in litigation now it's certainly up to the individual elected official whether they choose to do that or not I've always advised you not to do it because I think that's a risk most people wouldn't want to run. Thank you, Jason. That's the answer I wanted to hear. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Very good. Additional discussion. Let's go to Alderman Sam Quaker. Thank you, Mayor. Several months ago, the City Council uh, unanimously, unanimously, I believe, uh, passed a, a policy uh, protecting um, city employees and their right to speak to council members for any reason or for no reason. Now, in the past, city employees have, have been uh, reluctant to use email to rcgov.org, um, you know, to speak to their council members, and, and typically it's phone communication or personal email communication. Um, if, if I support this tonight, do I have a commitment that, that there will not be an, an, an effort at any time in any, in any way to ever determine whether a city employee tried to talk to me to express a concern over at rcgov.org. Do I have that commitment on the record? Kevin? I'm gonna answer it with, like Scott said, it depends. Um, I mean, to stand here and give a carte blanche that we'd never look at an employee's email, if an employee has violated you know, some city ordinance or, city, or uh, state law or federal law or violated some other policy, I don't think I can fairly stand here and say today that we'd never have to look at an, uh, an employee's email and if they had happened to email a, a council member in that process I guess I'll defer to the city attorney but I would think that that might be a case where something was actually discoverable in a criminal case or maybe a civil case absent that yes I'm very comfortable standing here and saying we don't go out and snoop at emails and this this was the city attorney <clears throat> and I would add one one additional caveat to that as the governing body you have an obligation to ensure that your employees are following all of your adopted policies and procedures 
So there may be a time when it's necessary to look at an employee's email to find out if they have, in fact, violated a policy. And I'll give you an example. If there was an allegation that a city employee was using their email for an inappropriate purpose and somebody delivered something to the human resources director that showed that, that would be a very good reason to look at that employee's email. And I think that the council would be negligent if they didn't allow management that latitude. To answer the very specific question that Mr. Quaker asked, I can't foresee any case where an employee's contacting their, an elected official would constitute grounds for violation of city policy. So I can't see that ever as being a basis for looking at someone's um, email correspondence. Now that correspondence may be reviewed if there's another basis for looking at it, but that certainly wouldn't be the reason we'd do it in the first place. Alderman Quick, you're still on the floor, sir. Thank you. To be more specific, uh, in the past, um, employees have been in, informed that rather than talking to council members about, a, for example, a grievance or a concern, it had to go through the grievance process. Under the new policy that we have passed, um, although employees are encouraged to use the grievance process, if they want, they can also talk to council members. I just want to make sure that that's uh, protected and no longer seen as as a violation of policy if someone talks to us about a union grievance or a, a union negotiation because we've we've changed that policy significantly in the last couple of months and so I wanted a commitment that that wouldn't be seen as a some sort of a policy violation where uh, a city employee would would not be able to uh, communicate to uh, a council member on on city time their concern Kevin I'm going to defer to Jason, our city attorney, let him give you <laughs> the best legal advice on that. So, Jason? The only thing I can say to that is that the employees have the right to talk to their council members. If they're doing it on city time when they're supposed to be doing city work, they may be in violation of a work rule, but that's not going to be a basis to go look at their email. The other thing that I would point out is that under that policy, if the employee approaches the council member rather than invoking the grievance process, they may lose the right to file a grievance because the time may run. Okay. Anything else? Hold on quick. Okay. My last question is, is, should we put something in that amendment that implies that, it's, that permission isn't automatic, is it that permission isn't automatically <coughs> granted? Wouldn't that alleviate the concern that's being raised uh, tonight? Isn't it kind of implied with that bullet point, the way it's written, that if there's a request that it would just be logged and, and the request would be granted? Let's go to Jason Green, City Attorney. I would suggest that you not do that because that may impair the ability of the city to actually conduct an investigation and um, hinder um, the detection of conduct that may violate city policy. I think that if you throw up another hurdle that has to be overcome, you expose the city to additional liability if we've got city employees um, acting outside the confines of adopted policy. So I would not recommend that. One final comment. Yep, there. go ahead, please. Um, could we? Could we just add a sentence at the end that says SDCL, whatever it is, 27.1 applies, and then we're done? Jason? I, I'm not sure how that would specifically apply in this case. The, the discussion has mi mixed this policy with open records, but really they're completely separate. This policy is consistent with the open records statute, and it would have to be consistent with any other open records requirements. But I don't, I don't believe any reference to a specific statute, especially the open records one, is necessary in this case. Okay. Anything else? No, sir. Let's go to Alderwoman Karen Olson. In terms of looking at, at email, is there any element of probable cause? Jason? No. There is no requirement of a showing for probable cause or reasonable suspicion for that matter. Um, formalizing um, something like that to that extent would significantly impair your manager's ability to ensure that their employees are, are following all of the policies and work rules. I think that, that you have to rely on the good judgment of the people that are promoted to management in making those decisions and also of everyone else that will be in the chain when those decisions are made from the IT director, the city attorney, and the mayor. I can't imagine a situation coming up where someone's email is reviewed without the mayor having had some input on that. Okay, Alderman Olson, Alderman Olson you still have the floor, ma'am. Okay. Very good. Just a reminder, we did have the question, I think, posed to the IT 
as far as how many emails were viewed in the past couple of years, and I don't remember the exact number, but I think it was less than a handful. Was that correct? So, so four or five. So two or three. I, I believe it was four or five. I pulled those numbers yeah. when it was asked before. In the and last I think the, that information years. was given to the council. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure. You know, and, and there again, um, I think everyone had my commitment. First of all, we don't take it lightly. If, if unless there's unless there's a good, compelling reason to look at anybody's emails. Uh, it's not going to happen and more specifically um, if there if there's a request to look at a an elected officials emails I will tell you that that'll be a discussion uh, between the city attorney and council leadership before there's ever a consideration of ever doing that and it better be awful doggone compelling before we ever even consider it because I I believe that those are somewhat uh, 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 sacred to that elected official and that we shouldn't be breaking that trust let's go to Alderwoman I'm going to go to Alderman Lloyd LaCroix. Thank you, Mayor. I guess one of my biggest concerns when this first came up was that uh, the fairness of how this is distributed. And what I mean by that is I, I've, I've known a case, and this doesn't has nothing to do with the city, it, is that you know a person uh, was using the internet or using his computer inappropriately, but no more inappropriately than his supervisor or manager. But because he 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 was a I, I you know what for whatever reason a person reviewed the usage of the internet and the, that computer and, and said and used the the policy as wrongdoing but and picked him out for it and was discharged for it. That was my concern with this is that if this happens that this policy be fair and and, and if you're going to review somebody that. For something along those lines and you should review department head and manager you know make sure it's all you know I know we put in you guys put in there that occasional checking of, of the email is okay and so forth but I just really caution that uh, what's good for one should be good for all and, and we should be fair that way and that, that's my concern with this very good thank you uh, procedural questions anyone wish to speak for older one older woman Hadcock speaks for a second time so turn your light if not well, to Alderwoman Deb Hadcock. Just a question for Jason, if I could. Okay, go ahead, please. On their network usage, it says personal software may not be loaded or attached to any city-owned equipment without written authorization by designated department director and by ITD. Is that different than what we were just talking about? Jason? Yes, that's, uh, that's very different. That would be a request from a uh, city employee to have some software that's maybe not necessary for their job loaded on their particular machine. Um, any of those requests would have to go through IT, and I think IT wants to keep a very tight control over what software is loaded on to ensure we don't create conflicts. And same with um, elected officials? Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. The reason I believe that's placed in there is the fact that we've gone to an automated update system within the city where we don't go and individually update computers manually. What they do is they actually do it uh, uh, electronically. And the problem is, is if they don't know of all the programs, or if people start throwing programs on there, it could very much uh, uh, basically interrupt the ability of, of staff to do what we call mass updating of, of programs. How'd I do? <laughs> For somebody who's technologically uh, inept, I think. Okay. Okay, additional discussion. Let's go to Alderman Ron Weifenbach. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I didn't want to get to a micro level on this, but if, if a constituent or someone brings me a piece of software or a presentation with Excel spreadsheet or whatever, I got to come to one of you guys to put it on this computer. Kevin, I don't believe that's the intent of this. I don't think that's what it states either. You want to, you just want to put a file. A, a, put a file on. Yeah, or maybe they're whatever they give me a disk or out, You know, whatever they want me to look at. Go ahead. Let's go I to guess, Jason. I guess, I guess I'd, I'd pose that question to Jason. Let's go to Jason Green. If a constituent just gave you a file, for example, a Microsoft Word file or uh, an Excel spreadsheet, you don't have to get special permission for that. Your, your computer has the software to use that file. But if a constituent gives you something that, that doesn't work with the software that's currently on your computer and you need to add software to it, that's, the, that's what has to be approved by IT is the additional software. And I think that it's very important that IT keep close tabs on what software is loaded onto the city's network to ensure that we don't have you know, malicious viruses or things like that. 
But just to get a, a Word document or something like that, no, absolutely not. You don't need IT permission for that. Okay, Alderman my wife and back you. Thank you. Okay, any further discussion? Motion on the floor is for approval. Seeing no further lights, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you for the discussion, everyone. We're on to the Public Works Committee items. Item number 64. Alderman Kroger, if you would, please. Item number 64 is a request by Stephen Dunn for Black Hills Power to consider an application for a fence height exception to allow an eight foot high fence with barbed wire in the low density residential district located on the east side of 5th Street between Cleveland and Oakland Street. Uh, I would move to continue this to our August 17th meeting at the applicant's request. We have a motion and a second to continue item number 64 to the August 17th City Council meeting at the applicant's request. Any discussion on that motion? Let's go to Alderman Sam Quaker. Thank you, Mayor. Is this a continuation with a purpose? Let's go to Marcia, who, who's going to handle this? Can't say the exception. Marcia? Um, there are representatives of Black Hills uh, Power here that may be able to answer their intent with the reason for the continuation. Okay. Did you, would you like to pose I'd that like question? I'd like to find out the reason for the continuation, if I could. Okay. Very good. If you got to identify yourself for the record, and, and the question on the, uh, that is posed is, uh, what is the rationale be behind the request of the continuation? Certainly. Um, Mark Sarda, Black Hills Power. Our understanding at the last public works meeting is we were talking about the fence height exception. Other issues kind of came into that, noise issues and other things that were unrelated to the fence itself. So us as a company decided that maybe the council hasn't gotten all the information that we've supplied planning and zoning and public works. So our intentions are to make sure we package that all up and get everybody a copy of all the information that they have in addition to the fence height. So we'd be happy to, you know, we, we want to get this thing through. And I know you guys are using a lot of time on the, the particular issue, but it just seemed like there's other things came up unrelated to that. And we felt that maybe not everybody has all the valid information. Okay, thank you. Uh, Alderman Quaker, you still have the floor? Okay, motion on the floor is a continuation motion, so we'll stick strictly to the continuation discussion. Let's go to Alderwoman Deb Hadcock. I know this is going to be continued. Just a question for Jason. Go ahead. The rules for PUC on utilities, um, either for fences around utilities or the utility substation, um, can we be overrided by the PUC or um, the utility? Owners. I'm going to go to Jason Green. It's a little bit off track, but I think it's a fair question. In other words, uh, does the utility company have the ability to override us using 11.619 through 11.621? And uh, my, based on my review of South Dakota law, that's an open question. I believe that there's a very strong argument that the city council would be the body that would make that decision. But given that there is no case law that's directly on point with a utility and a municipality, it would be a question of first impression for the Supreme Court to decide, assuming that it was litigated that far. Okay, yeah, very good. Alderman, Alderwoman Hadcock, you still have the floor, ma'am. So tell me what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jason. That means I have an idea, but I can't tell you for sure. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah. It's hard to make a decision on the fence or anything else without that. Maybe we no. can get a little more clarification next time, but I know and I had put that question earlier, so it's hard to come up with an answer tonight. So thank you, Jason. Okay, motion on the floor is continuation. Let's go to Alderwoman Karen Olson. It's important to continue this because the neighborhood was told it was to be continued, so that is the reason they are not here this, tonight. Okay, very good. Any further discussion? Motion on the floor is continuation from item number 64 to the August 17th City Council meeting at the applicant's request. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We're on to the bids. Pauline, what do you have? Thank you. First, I'm going to see if I can actually use this, because I can also be uh, a little inept technology-wise. Oh, hang on a second. Yep, we're on to item 60. Okay, go ahead, Pauline. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The first item on the agenda is the 2009 pavement marking project. We actually received two bids on this item. I'm going to try and zoom in a little bit for you. That's all right. The first bid was from Traffic Services Company for $38,052. The second from Dakota Barricade for $37,145. Staff recommendation is to go with low bid to Dakota Barricade. We have a motion and a second to award the bid to Dakota Barricade in the amount of $37,145. Any discussion on that motion? Let's go to Alderman Ron Kroger. Thank you, Mayor. I asked Robert this question. I think it probably works, but you know, it's already the first part of August. I don't know when they start, but it'll probably be September when they do all these pavement markings. Of course, then we're a couple months from snow and sanding and magnesium chloride and all that kind of stuff. Busiest time of year has gone by. And by spring, all the markings are gone. And then, of course, our summertime and all the tourists and all that kind of stuff and no, no traffic uh, lines and that type of stuff. It, to me, it doesn't make sense that we do it so late in the fall um, in a time frame where it's, you know, it's not really needed as much as I think it is during the summertime, Robert. I, that's my only comment, Mayor. So to Robert Ellis, Public Works Director. Thank you, Mayor. I, I did want to point out that this is actually for uh, what we call more of our durable pavement markings. This is the tape that gets grooved in the ground. This usually has a life of about five years, so we'll put it down this year. Won't need any new applications for a period of about five years. I believe, uh, Mr. Kroger, uh, you're referring to our the liquid paint. It's more of a, every year you have to put it down, and we did get a late start on that this year. We are all the way through the city, and we will try to do that earlier in the year next year. But this specific project is somewhat different. Okay, Alderman Kro uh, Kroger, you still have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Robert, for the explanation. So you're guaranteeing that when they put this down in September, October, <laughs> and the first snowstorm, and we happen to drop our plows down, that it'll still be there next spring, is what you're saying? But that is our hope. We actually grooved the pavement down uh, about 300 mils or so, so that it's below the, uh, the, uh, the blades of the plow. All right, thank so that's you. That's the goal. That's our hope. <laughs> Okay, a motion on the floor is to accept the bid from Dakota Barricades for $37,145. Any further discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, motion passes. The next bid item is for ice sanding material. One bid was received from Pete Lean and Sons for $14 per <coughs> unit, which is per ton. The um, advertising authority was $75,000, so they also had a bid where they could buy additional per material if needed depending on the weather so you see where if we we can get 70,000 and then ad buy additional at the $14 per ton move approval do we have a second okay we have a motion and a second to accept the bid from Pete Lean and Sons for a unit amount where is Jason for a unit amount of $14 per ton I assume that's how we're going to bid this yes sir okay so what we're, what we're actually accepting the bid on is the per ton, uh, per unit price of $14 per ton. Okay. And then the additional? Yep. And with the option to get additional. Correct. Okay, everyone okay. clear in the motion. Discussion on that motion. Let's go to Alderman Bill Waugh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a question for Mr. Ellis. And the question would be, how does that $14 per ton compare with the average out and about? Okay, Mr. Ellis. We're getting a good deal. <laughs> this is a good price. We did uh, uh, shop around and looked at what the state bid um, pays for their sand as well. We do have to get a little bit higher grade sand because we need a hardness index to keep it from going airborne, causing air quality issues. Uh, so it's, it's slightly higher than what you might find in other communities that don't have air quality issue. Uh, comparing this to salt, salt runs about uh, $84 a ton, so it's quite a bit cheaper than that material. I think this is a fair price for sand. Yep. Alderman Wally, you the floor, sir. I would just like to know what the slightly higher amount is. Mr. Ellis, do you know what the state pays for their sand? I, d I cannot give that dollar amount right now, no. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Let's go to Alderman Ron Weifenbach. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I had to get my computer fixed while I was out of the room for a minute. Are we um, approving all these items on there? Just no. Just Item number two, which would be approving okay. the awarding of the bid to Pete Lean and Sons for a 
unit price of $14 per ton. Okay, I wanted to talk on item number three and number four. Okay. So. Any further discussion? Item number two, motion on the floor is for approval. Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, motion passes. Item number three, please. That is for the East St. Francis Street, East St. Anne Street, Aspen Avenue, and East Mead Street water main reconstruction projects, phases w phase one, project two. On this one, we received five bids. You can see those before you. They range from six hundred ninety-nine thousand two seventy-one forty down to four hundred ninety thousand eight thirty-one twenty-five. Staff recommendation is to award the bid to Highmark Inc. in the amount of four hundred ninety thousand eight thirty-one twenty-five. Could we have a motion, please? Move we'll approval. We have a motion and a second to award the bid to Highmark Inc. for a total dollar amount of four hundred ninety thousand eight hundred thirty-one dollars and twenty-five cents. Let's go to Alderman Ron Wife. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would just like a brief explanation of the engineer's estimate versus the, the bid. Okay, I, mean, I believe there's like 200 and some thousand dollars difference, yep. 240. Let's go to Robert Ellis, our or public 30. works director. Yes, the engineer's estimate was $720,000. The, the high bid was right around $700,000, and the low bid was $210,000 less than that at 490. So there was a wide range in bid prices on this. Um, we use the standard, what we actually do to come up with the engineer's estimate, we take our, our yearly uh, quantities and bid estimates that were received throughout the year, and we just apply those to every project going forward. Uh, so they're fairly uniform. And I mean, I'm, this is, I'm elated about it. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but I'm just wondering, I mean, it, this is a, yep. I mean, a, a true indication of how our bid process can really save our taxpayers a lot of money. On one project, $230,000. In, in, in comparison, or if you take the low, the next, you take the highest bid, you're looking at two hundred and ten thousand dollars. So, thank you. Thank you. Let's go to Alderman Sam Quaker. Thank you, Mayor um, Robert. Where is Highmark located out of? Are they a well-established firm? Yes, done, they are. Have they well done business with the city before. Absolutely. Okay, Alderman Quaker, show the floor, sir. And they're, they're are they a local firm? I, uh, they, they've done a lot of local work. I can't okay. tell you where their office is located. If it's within Rapid City or just outside just city local. limits. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Motion on the floor is to accept. Oops. Let me get to the right page. Accept the bid from Highmark Inc. for a total amount of four hundred ninety thousand eight hundred thirty-one dollars twenty-five cents. Any further discussion on that motion? Any further discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes. The next item is for Maple Avenue and East Idaho Street Reconstruction Project Phase 1, Project 1. We also received five bids on, on this project, ranging from 784309 down to 626819 Staff recommendation is to award the bid to RCS Construction, Inc. in the amount of 626819 Could we have a motion, please? Second. We have a motion and a second to award the bid to RCS uh, Construction Inc., which is a little bitter at $626,819.80. Discussion on that motion. Alderman Quaker, I still have your light on. Did you want to speak? Okay. Any further discussion? Motion on the floor is for approval. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. The next item is for East Philadelphia Street 16 inch water transmission main extension. We have received five bids on this one <coughs> as well, ranging from $194,380.45. Oh, excuse me, $196,417.75 down to $131,891. Staff recommendation is to award the bid to Heavy Constructors, Constructors Inc. in the amount of $131,891. Okay, we have a motion and a second to accept the bid from Heavy Contractors Inc. for a total dollar amount of $131,891. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. The last item is an informal quote for the First Street Outfall 36 inch flap gate. The reason why it's an informal quote is because of the dollar amount that it came in at. We received two quotes for $24,219.50 from Warwick's and $24,847 from Mainline Contracting. Staff recommendation is to award the the project to Warax excavating in the amount of twenty four thousand two nineteen fifty. Do we have a motion, please? Okay, we have a motion and a second to award this to Warax excavating Inc. for the total dollar amount of twenty four thousand 
$219.50. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. That does take us into the bids. We're on to the mayor's items. There's nothing under mayor's items. The only thing under council items and lays on reports is item number 71 is to select a proposal for the St. Joe Street parking ramp. Uh, Robert, did you want to speak to this? Yes, if I could, please. I just uh, wanted to make a clarification on the memorandum that uh, is linked to the agenda. I did a side-by-side -side comparison, and um, there was quite a bit of information floating out there. I tried to summarize that to do a comparison of both proposals that were submitted. And it was brought to my attention that I may have a slight error in there. And that was for question number one, which asked for uh, proposed uses to be included in the project, uh, commercial residential parking or combination thereof. I listed 171,000 square feet uh, for the Presidential Plaza Partners LLC. Uh, they informed me that it may be upwards of 560,000 square feet, so substantially uh, higher than what I had reported in the side-by-side. -side. And then one other uh, point that was brought to my attention, that was question number two, um, statement regarding um, a list including similar projects the applicant has success in obtaining funding for. I believe I listed uh, uh, nothing was submitted under the Presidential Plaza Partners LLC uh, pertaining to that question. In fact, there was some information in there, uh, and I'll read that real quickly. They have uh, successfully received funding for Point West Apartments, Mountain Shadows Townhomes, and various other single-family dwellings. So my apologies for missing that information. Okay, very good. To proceed, I would look for a motion, at least for discussion, if someone could give us a motion to approve at least one of these, and then we can have the discussion. Jason, is that the appropriate way to move forward? Yes, I think that you need a motion on the floor to discuss, and I would suggest that the motion should be to direct the city attorney's office to enter into negotiations with one or the other parties to work out the details that obviously aren't contained within the... But at that point, once the motion's on the floor, then we can have discussions about both items. Yes. Okay, very good. Can we have a motion, please? Karen, did you want to offer a motion? So I'll move. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead, Karen. I would move. I, I would move that the city and um, or recommend that the city attorney enter into negotiations with the St. Joe Investment Group LLC. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second for a discussion. Let's now the motion on the floor is to direct staff to start negotiations with uh, the St. Joe LLC. Discussions on that motion, or there again, we're going to get a little bit of, give a little bit of latitude here, so we can talk about both uh, presentations. Any discussion? Seeing no lights, I knew that'd get a couple. <laughs> Let's uh, go to Alderman Ron Weifenbach. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, obviously, I'm prepared to make a decision on which I think proposal going forward. But I wanted to, I wanted to thank both applicants for. Uh, uh, bringing proposals forward and, and the opportunity for Rapid City to to uh, capture uh, the opportunity in the new market tax credits, which is, is somewhat of a, a new idea for Rapid City, maybe uh, on this on this level. And uh, uh, whatever project goes forward, uh, I'm hoping that our staff gets the opportunity to get involved and uh, maybe into the level of, of a level of a uh, the city having a seat at the table uh, looking for opportunities on new market tax credits that would allow the city to synergize on that opportunity um, from what I've learned over the last two weeks in this area that there's 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 opportunity there and if and if we approach it correctly um, and we and we do our due diligence that that the city can can really win big on this deal and uh, allow for some economic growth downtown and and uh, allow for some infill within our city which has been a long time coming uh, we've, we've done a lot of growth outside the city and the opportunity to grow inside the city is is of utmost importance for the survival of downtown in the future and uh, I'm, I'm hoping that as we enter into these negotiations that we leave ourselves some room and some latitude for the city to have a seat at the table we're, we're the city and the taxpayers of Rapid City are making a large investment in this proposal and uh, uh, I believe that there's areas from what my understanding and just my the higher level of the understanding of the new market tax credits that there's availability for uh, our city 
and our taxpayers to really win in this deal as long as we have a place at the table. So going forward, I'll be listening to my colleagues' conversations, and, and I hope that we have a, a good discussion on this. And uh, I hope this just doesn't tie our hands to, to doing what proposals come forward. I hope that we have a negotiation process that takes place and allows the city to have a seat at the table with, with the investment of taxpayer dollars that we're putting into this project. I, I find it hard not for this project not to, not to be a win and not to go forward with whoever is awarded the project. So uh, with that being said, I'm, uh, I hope that uh, moving forward we have those conversations and, uh, and, and make sure that we have a seat at the table to uh, win and, and synergize off this opportunity. Again, I'd like to thank both parties for the proposals they brought forward. I think this is an exciting opportunity. It's, 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 a, it's a good use of, of what we have done in the past with TIFs. Is it made this, this one is what they were originally designed to do, was to infill within our city and provide for opportunities in some of the tracks of our city that it need to be developed. Um, and I think both parties will agree that <coughs> the opportunity in this project is, is, is exciting. So with that being said, I'm hoping that we can move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to Alderman Lloyd LaCroix. Thank you, Mayor. I, you know, again, I, I'll echo what, what Ron said. Both groups have done an excellent job. And I'll, I'll repeat what I said the other night. Uh, the reason I, I, I'm going for the St. Joe project is it looks like it's like seven different buildings into one, along with a pocket park and, and so forth. Um, but both groups have worked very hard. And I could foresee both going forward sometime in the future later on, but I'm, I'm leaning towards the St. Joe. Uh, but what I would like to do is I'd like to make a friendly amendment to the, to the motion, if the motion maker is okay with that. And that would be to uh, not only, the original motion was to authorize the city attorney to negotiate with the St. Joe Investment Group for a public-private partnership proposal. Uh, what I'd like to do is add to require that all negotiations be be completed by the end of the year. That would be my add-on, and that uh, along with city staff, that uh, council leadership be involved with the negotiations. If that's okay with the motion maker. I'd accept that. Yeah. Let me ask the procedural question. Does anybody have any objection to the friendly amendment? And that is to require that the negotiations be completed by the end of the year and the council leadership be involved uh, along with city staff in negotiating. Okay. Yep. End of the year. End of the year. By December 31st. Okay. Seeing no objection, we'll assume that that was the original motion. We'll accept that as a friendly amendment. So we are on to the motion. Let's go to Alderman LaCroix, do you have anything else? No. That's okay, let's go to Alderman Malcolm Chapman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, um, I just echo the comments made by the two previous council members that uh, thanking both um, groups for coming forward with what I think are exciting projects that could potentially enhance downtown and be that tipping point that could just go on to help create even more of a vibrant downtown in Rapid City. So I applaud them for their efforts. I support the motion on the floor, and I think it it is wise to put some end date to the negotiation so that this doesn't go on and on and on and on, but that we know that there are some negotiations that's going to take place, and if this project is to move forward with the group that the council chooses tonight, then let's be about doing that. Um, I, too, agree that um, it's, um, I think a lot of hard work has gone into this, but I also just want to remind um, everyone of, of how the city got into this position. Uh, through the 2012 process, the citizens in this community said that we needed additional parking downtown. Uh, as important as these projects are as they come forward to create larger projects of livable space and commercial or retail or, or all of the other things, I think that's pretty exciting. But the city's role in this was to figure out a way to enhance or increase the number of public parking spaces downtown. Uh, I think at some point both of those projects did that, uh, but I think that the St. Joe Investment Group did that uh, to a greater degree than the Presidential Plaza Group, and as a result, I will support the motion that's on the floor. Thank you. Let's go to Alderwoman Karen Olson. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My question is perhaps for Jason. I know that they're entering in negotiations, but the St. Joe project does um, return the parking to the city. And I just didn't know if it's possible for our city attorney to describe in some way what that end result would be. Will we own land or will we own building or? Let's go to um, Jason Green, city attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. My understanding of that proposal is that initially we will have a long-term lease for the parking spaces so that the city will continue to receive the revenue. Once the time period for the recapture under the new market tax credit expires, the portion of the building that would be um, used for public parking that the city would own um, could be transferred to the city, for example, through a condominium arrangement. So I believe there are legal mechanisms that would, would make the proposal viable. Yep, go ahead. I think that that was an important consideration in the discussion. I believe in listening to our community as whole as they've talked about this, this general area of proposals over the last year and a half um, and in regard to other pieces of property that belong to the city. Um, our citizens feel strongly that the, the um, remaining, that the property needs to remain with the city. And I think that this proposal um, carries out that spirit, which I believe our city as a whole can be very supportive of. And I think that um, reduces one more concern that the um, population generally will have about whether or not this um, is a viable project and will move forward in a positive manner with results that are um, good for the citizens of Rapid City. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to Alderman Bill Waugh. Thank you, Mayor. I have a question for our City Attorney, Jason Green. Okay. Let's say the negotiations break down between now and the end of the year. What, does, uh, what happens to the process then? Do we start this whole system over again, or does the group that did not receive the uh, proposal, are they next in line? I, I just want to know the sequence of events. Let's go to Jason Green, City Attorney. Well, ultimately, that will be up to the Council. I can tell you that if we get to a point where it's apparent we're not going to be able to come to agreement, I'm not going to wait till December 31st to report that fact to the council. As soon as that becomes apparent, I'll, I will report that to the council. At that point in time, you would have the opportunity to decide how you wanted to proceed. You certainly could direct me to take up negotiations with um, the uh, other proposer at that time, if that was your wish. Okay, Mr. Wall, you still have the floor. Thank you. That's all I needed. Okay, very good. Let's go to Alderwoman Deb Hadcock. Um, I also like to thank the two people or two groups that put their time and effort into this um, for downtown. It's going to be a great project. Um, I believe both of the projects were awesome projects. Just one seemed to be more feasible than the other. And that's why I ended up um, also, and we'll be voting for the St. Joe project. Um, I do believe in the concept of this project. Um, for me, it's going to be the project plan and what they offer to the citizens in the downtown um, for their um, project and what taxpayer units and TIFs and how they use those in order to take care of the taxpayers as well as their project. I know in a sense you have to um, be fiscally responsible um, for yourself because you're doing a business but you also are using 2.8 of city money, taxpayer money and you also are using the land so um, in the end I'll be watching closely about the project plan. I know even with Hanny's, it was a great concept, but some of the project plan didn't make sense. So um, I think it'll be, be a good concept and we'll see what goes next, but um, I'm excited to see what's proposed. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to Alderman Sam Quaker. Thank you, Mayor. I'm supportive of the motion on the floor with two main conditions. And that is, is that I hope as this moves through the process that the uh, that the use of tax increment financing revenues will be minimal. Uh, there are, I believe, $20 million that would be available through a TIF. Hopefully no more, it's my understanding, no more than $3.5 million would be used. I think that's a significant, um, that's a signi uh, significant reduction in terms of overall cost uh, for, uh, for taxpayers. Uh, number two, that there would be a, a net gain of 215 uh, parking uh, parking spaces. I do have a, 
a couple of questions for our city attorney. Uh, the first is, uh, Jason, if the property um, reverts back to the city at some point, how then would it generate revenue for the tax increment financing district to pay off? And number two, if the property transfers back to the city, uh, would this project then generate revenue for the proposed bid district that's being considered for downtown? Jason? It, it, it's a little early to say exactly how that works, but the way I would envision it and the way that and the mechanism that we had discussed with the Rushmont project was that the parking portion of the building that the city was going to own would be condominiumized. The whole thing really is a, con is a giant condominium. Since the city-owned parking would be privately owned, that would not be subject to real property tax, but the rest of the building would be subject to real property tax. Um, I believe that it would also generate revenue through the business improvement district that's been discussed. Um, we'd have to make an analysis to see how that works at the end of the day, though. But it's fair to state that that's in your consideration as, as the, the bid moves through the consideration process that this project would be subject to the, the bid district if it moves through. Jason? I believe once it becomes privately owned, absolutely it's subject to the bid. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Let's go to Alderman White from Bucky Light came on and off. Did you wish to speak? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, and there again, my apologies. The lights are sort of flashing. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I know you wanted to hear me speak again, so. Yeah. Let's go to Alderman Ron Weifenbach. Well, I had a question for Jason. Uh, on, on the St. Joe project, they talked about a construction manager uh, type process. Are you comfortable with that? I mean, I know that when the other process died, part of the process, the reason it died was because of the public bid um, portion of it. Jason Green. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm interested to hear their proposal on this. Um, the one thing I will point out is that the Rushmont project was proposing a design build process, and that's different than a CM at risk. Um, I believe that they're aware of the, the potential problems, and, and based on a very brief conversation on this matter, they've assured me they feel they can meet the requirements of public bidding on this project. So my, my concern I'd be, is how you feel, Jason. I, I'd be remiss in answering at this point because I don't have enough information. The other question I have is as if, if one of the proposals goes forward, say it seems like there are people are leaning towards the St. Joe project for, um, as the proposals go forward, obviously they're gonna change. Um, what role does the city play? Uh, my concern is, is you know, if you're, if you're doing a $20 million project and the city's investing in 2.8, 1 million, 3.8, 3.5, you're looking at six and almost seven million dollars in a 20 million dollar project so what's the city's role uh in negotiations moving past the proposal state and you know the developer agreement th those types of issues jason green i believe that the part of what we will be discussing in the negotiations is exactly how changes to the concept are approved with the city's input and to what extent we have input i think that's something that's subject to negotiation i, I certainly can't answer that question right now I can tell you it's something that will be at the forefront when we sit down to visit with, with this group because it's a very important issue. Right, so it, it, what we're talking about tonight is picking one proposal over another to start at ground zero. And I mean, at that point, I mean, there, I mean, there could be a lot of things that take place. And uh, Jason Green? As I see what's been presented to the council, you have two separate frameworks. We've got a lot of room to work within those frames to set up details and to, to negotiate specifics. So we're a long way from saying this is an absolute go, but the first step of getting there is sitting down at the negotiation table and discussing how these uh, issues might be addressed. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Let's go to Alderman Lloyd LaCroix. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, one of the things that I looked at on this is this is we have the option of adding 150 parking spots and and that's one of the things I'll be asking at the at when the negotiations started going as far as the costs and so forth but I just like to little step off the side just a little bit and say that Malcolm and I have talked about having roundtable meetings or strategic planning meetings in the future and, and with the addition of the leadership being involved in negotiations we'll be able to keep the council updated if they so choose to to engage in those meetings 
so that's something that uh, we're looking at doing and, and trying to get the information out. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Hadcock, did your light flash. Are you okay? Okay. Motion on the floor is to approve uh, or direct to direct staff to negotiate uh, with the St. Joe LLC group and that negotiations shall be completed by December 31st and that part of that negotiation team will include council leadership. Everyone clear on that motion? Seeing no further lights, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you everyone for the discussion. We are on to staff items. Item number 72 and the Vision 2012 update. Robert? I only have one update to give and that was uh, previously approved on council tonight, on the agenda tonight, and that was for the uh, Founders Plaza project. There was uh, $100,000 of 2012 funds appropriated for that project. Uh, the advertising authority for $80,000 was approved tonight to do some concrete work to uh, actually lay the foundation for uh, that project. That is 100% going to be paid for out of Vision 2012 funds. The next phase of the project um, is all being raised privately. It's about $45,000, and that's to do some engraving, etching, and some signage, as I understand. And again, that'll all be privately funded. And then when that work's completed, there's another uh, possible $50,000 private funded improvement that will be made that will complete that project. So that is all I have to report tonight. Thank you. Any questions of Robert Ellis on the update of the 2012? If not, the chair would look for a motion to acknowledge your report. We have a motion and a second to acknowledge the 2012 update. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We are on to item number 73. That is under appeals. Let's see. Alderman, I don't care. Quaker, could you read that in, please, for us? Item number 73. Okay. We'll go to... Couldn't see him down there. Let's go to Alderman Ron Kroger. Could you please read on item number 73, please? You guys are playing musical chairs on me, so I don't, don't know quite where to look. Item number 73 is appeal of a denial for an exception to waive requirement to install sidewalk for the city ordinance 12.16.080 on property located at 1770 Center Street, uh, which is the Horst offices. Uh, planning, their public works committee made the recommendation to approve with, uh, with a waiver of right to protest, and that'd be my motion. We have a motion and a second for approval with the requirement of a approved waiver of right to protest, which we did earlier tonight. Is that correct, Marsha? Okay. Everyone clear on the motion on the floor? Any additional discussion? Seeing no lights, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 74, please. Uh, item number 74 is an appeal of a planning commission decision on a request by Dream Design. Green Design International Incorporated to consider an application for a planned commercial development, initial and final development plan uh, located at 336 Mead Street. Uh, I would move to continue this to August 17th at the applicant's request. We have a motion and a second to continue this item to the August 17th City Council meeting at the applicant's request. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. That does take us uh, to the end. We're to the public hearing items. This is items 75 through 100. The chair would look for a motion to open the public comment period on items 75 through 100. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, motion passes. C, we have a couple speaker request forms. Uh, Debbie Schwartzman, uh, 1022 Rock Hill Road on items 92 through 100. And there again, Debbie, we do time this, so you have about three minutes, and if you could just identify yourself for the record, please. Okay. My name is Debbie Schwartzman, and I respectfully request that you please deny the landowner's request to be rezoned to light and or heavy industrial. The property that they are requesting be zoned that way is surrounded on three sides by residential property and are not in an industrial neighborhood. If the request to be zoned industrial is approved, it will lower the values of all the surrounding residential properties and will be the death of our residential neighborhood because no one wants to live by an industrial business. We agree with growth management's recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We also have a speaker request form from Ruth. Is it Beckwith? I wasn't quite sure on the spelling on the end. Is it Beck Beckwith. Very Beck good. Beck Ruth, if you could just identify yourself for the record, please. I'm Ruth Beckwith, and I live at 911 Glenside, and I also 
oppose, I do not agree with this. I would like to see it become residential. Uh, be, we sit where it, we look at it right behind us and there are rusted barrels and piles of wood and that's been the way it's been for 14 years since we've lived there. So I wish that you would not let it become also. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. We have a speaker request form from Royal Nelson, items 95 and 99. Very good, Mr. Nelson. Nielsen. Thank you. Nielsen Construction. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I was going to go over some items. As far as the reason, I would like to have the changes that's proposed made. I've been in construction since 1957 in this area, and I have families involved in it also. We've done a number of things. In our career, we used that as headquarters for 23 years working for Homestake. And we want to continue this. And the reason I'd like to do it is uh, I have two boys that's worked with me since they got out of school and families. And the thing that really counts is we like the area we paid a lot of taxes in Rapid City in that time, which I'm happy I could do. But I need to have it zoned the way we request it to be able to expand and continue to be able to get permits and continue our work. And number two, the past consideration that they had for light residential that's no place for houses up there due to several factors i have several neighbors around me and what i've been trying to do is clean it up and make a real good looking organization i haven't been able to because of the way it's zoned i couldn't get permits even with the county so now I've been annexed to the city, I need your help. Now there's a situation up through there that existed before I brought the property in 64. There was two stock ponds and there's quite a drainage system down through there. And there is several houses around me that do not have septic sewage service lines they are on septic systems and this is creating problems down there i've had it tested and it's from drain fields i want to finish filling that pond up clean it up and also in the future to help these neighbors i have been trying to consider a stub street up there Mr. Nelson, there will be time if you could just finish your remarks in the next 10 or 15 seconds. Okay. Anyway, my intention is to clean it up and make it work. Thank you, sir. We also have a speaker request form from Jerry Olson on items number 97 and 100, 3579 Reservoir Road. And Jerry, if you just identify yourself for the record, please. I'm Jerry Olson. I want to thank the mayor and the council. I've uh, been in business out there for 37 years. And uh, when we come to future, I have two sons that will run the business. But I need to expand it. And I need the, or the heavy industrial in order to add, add another building do a little more work. I haven't had any complaints from any of the neighbors and in the 37 years. Well, actually 36 up there, one year before that in the garage. <laughs> uh, 
But if, if the council feels that we need a little more input on this, we could go to a continuance and I would uh, have CTEC come up with a plan, a partial plan for you that uh, probably make you understand it a little better. We just get some basic drawings on what the, what the expansion to look like in the future. I guess that's, thanks a lot. Thank you, Mr. Olson. Also have a speaker request form from a Kirsten Cloverhouse. Kirsten, if you could just identify yourself for the record, please. Okay. I'm Kirsten Culverhouse and I live at 960 Glenside Drive. Um, so I'm speaking about items number 95 and 99, um, again, where I'm one of the properties that surrounds the three sides of the piece that was zoned low density residential, I think, through the county. And um, I'd like it to go back to that. And I think it's currently no use, but I do not want it to become light industrial. I have small children and my neighbors have small children and, you know, that's right next to us and I'm concerned about the dangers and the noise as well so thank you thank you I have no further speaker request forms or does anyone else wish to speak on any item 75 um, through 100 inclusive if so if you just go ahead and come up to the podium if not I'll, at this time we do leave the public hearing open and so we are on to the continued public hearing consent items. This is item 75 through 78. Marsha, do you wish to have any of those removed? 80, please. Item, nope, we're on items 75 through 78. My apologies. That's all right. So we're good? How about uh, anyone from the council? We're dealing on the continued public hearing consent items, item 75 through 78 only. If not, the chair would look for a motion to approve the continued public hearing consent items, item 75 through 78 inclusive per the recommendations as published. We have a motion second, any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, motion passes. That does take us to the end of the continued public hearings consent items. Chair would look for a motion to close the public hearing for items 75 through 100 inclusive. Thank you, do we have a second? We have a motion and a second, any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, motion passes. We're on to the consent public hearing items, items 79 through 87. Marsha, which items would you like to have removed? 80, 84, and 85 and 86. 86, so we have four items, is that correct? Yes. Okay, um, do you need to have item 81 pulled also? I had a note here. Okay. Okay. We have someone else who's going to pull it. Okay, so, so far we're, wor we're working on the consent public hearing items. This is the consent calendar. Item 79 through 87 inclusive, and so far we're pulling 80, 81, 84, 85, and 86. Any additional items to be pulled from the consent calendar? If not, the chair would look for a motion to approve the consent public hearing items. Item 79 through 87 inclusive, with the exception of 80, 81, 84, 85, and 86. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, motion passes. Item number 80, Mr. Kroger, could you read that in please? Item number 80 is to deny a request by Green Design International Incorporated for a variance to the subdivision regulations to waive the requirement to install water and sewer along Elkville Road and Interstate 90 as per chapter 16.16 .16 of the Rap City Municipal Code. Uh, located at 1851 Discovery Circle, uh, move to deny without prejudice. We have a motion second to deny without prejudice, item number 80. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item 81, please. Item 81 is a request by City of Rapid City for an <coughs> ordinance amendment to amend section 17.50.335 of the site triangles of the Rapid City Municipal Code. Uh, I would move to continue this to December 7th. Okay, we have a, we have a motion and a, 
We have a motion and a second to continue this item to the City Council meeting on December 7th, 2009. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item number 83, Alderman Quaker, if you would please read that in. And just, we do need to have a correction in the address on item number three, so as it's read in, instead of being 3815 Edward Street, it needs to be 1333 North Elkvale. From Heinzel Investments, doing business as Comfort Suites. One more time. Address is 1333 North Elkvale Road. Okay. For a retail liquor license transfer from Sheriff Properties, 4507 South I-90 Service Road. Move approval. We have a motion and a second for approval. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item number 84, please. Thank you, Mayor. I would move to continue item 84 to August 17 and 85 and 86, September 8th. Okay, very good. We have a motion to continue item number 84 to August 17 and 85 and 86 to the sep September 8th City Council meeting. Seeing discussion on that motion? Taking all three up. Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. That does take us to the end of the consent public hearing calendar. We're on to the non-consent public hearing items, item 88 through 100. Item number 88, please. Alderman Quaker. Item 88 is public hearing for the state revolving fund SRF loan application for water reclamation facility improvements project. Uh, move to open the public hearing. Jason, uh, I think that's the appropriate motion. I, I think it is too, and I think that you might save some time if you opened a public hearing on items 88 and 89 with one motion. That'd be my motion. Second. Okay. okay, we have a motion and a second to open the public comment period on item number 88 and 89. Any discussion on that motion? Robert, on, the, on whether or not we're going to open the public hearing. That's what we're dealing with. Okay, very good. I didn't think he had a question. But yeah. <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. We are. We have opened the public hearing on items both 88 and 89 to the public. I have no speaker request forms. Does anyone from the public wish to speak to either item 88 or 89? not, the chair would look for a motion to close the public hearing on items 88 and 89. So moved. Second. We have a motion and second. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Alderman Quaker, if you could read in item number 88, please. Item 88 is public hearing for the state revolving SRF loan application for water reclamation facility improvements project. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second for approval. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 89, please. Yes. <laughs> I, I would ask a requirement of the SRF loan program state statute requires that um, essentially the, uh, the memorandum that I prepared that is linked, that that be written into the minutes and it goes over the need of the project, the alternatives that were evaluated, description of the project, Post financing, the amount of SRF loan expected to borrow, revenue source pledge for repayment, interest rate and term of loan, and the effect of the proposed financing on user rates. That is a requirement of state statute. Was that the, I'll tell you what, why don't we do this? Can we have a motion to reconsider? I so second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to reconsider. Any discussion on the motion? <coughs> seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, move approval per the recommendation of Public Works. Is that all right? Okay, do we have a second? Okay, we have a motion and a second for approval with the language as proposed by Public Works. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Let's go to Alderwoman Karen Olson. So we're, we're, what we're describing is just the linked letter that you have written, Robert. Okay. Yes, ma'am, that would have to be written into the minutes. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm in support of the motion. Very good. Motion on the floor is for approval. Seeing for the lights, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Item number 89, please. I read item uh, 89 and 90 at once. Yeah, thank you again. Well, Jason, go ahead. Mayor, we've really disposed of 88 and 89 through yeah. the public hearings. You're really on to um, item, item number 90, 90, which is the actual lease. Okay. Yep, item number 90, please. Item, uh, item number 90 is to approve a lease agreement with Storybook Island Inc. and move approval. We have a motion, second for approval. Any discussion on that motion? Any discussion? Let's go to Alderwoman Deb Hadcock. Um, I asked this question this morning. Um, 
I know you put in CPI 50,000 for sidewalks and improvements um, out of the CPI for a suggestion on your um, budget list, Mayor. Um, I was just uh, wondering if we had that in the budget at this time in Parks and Rec or otherwise for helping out parks for that 50000 The answer is no. It is not in the proposed budget. That is something the council can certainly take up, but it is actually not officially part of the proposed uh, 2010 fiscal year budget. Um, hopefully I don't say anything that was in executive session. I'm not supposed to, Jason, stop me if I do, but um, we were thinking about buying uh, Skyline Drive for 50000 We seem to uh, be coming up with at least thirty. To fifty thousand for that when we proceeded to want to buy that uh, skyline drive if i'm correct and we were looking at where we were going to get that money from and there was many proposals of how to get that fifty thousand so i guess on this lease um it seems like the changes that we need um, would be um, feasible to to help out this park when we do this uh lease to do the sidewalks and stuff in our budget instead of put it at CPI. I guess that's where I'm going. No, CPI. No. CPI. And, uh, just, you know, there, there was uh, some recommendations when I pr presented the fiscal year 2010 budget of issue or items that could be funded if the council chose to take the CPI. So yes. I'm going to go to Jason Green. He has his hand waving at me. Thank you, Mayor. The, the item that was referenced by Alderman Hancock was on the agenda the last council meeting, the council ultimately voted that down. For purposes of this item, the lease does not contemplate any payment by the city for the operation of uh, Storybook Island. If the council wanted to take that up as a gratuitous matter through one of your other funding sources during the budget process or um, CIP, you certainly could do that, but you're not required to do it as a part of this item. Okay. Yeah, very good. I appreciate that, Jason. I guess I just want that to be said that um, when we were looking at funding sources for that, it seemed like we were coming up with many that were seemingly um, almost, we were ready to buy a $50,000 piece of land. So it seems like on a 50 year park, we'd be able to do that. And I will be bringing that forward on a uh, public work or legal finance item just to bring that forward because these people do need help with that area. And I appreciate you putting that on the CPI. Very good. Let's go to Patty Martinson. Yes, thank you, Mayor. I understood there was some issue with the odor with the standing water at Storybook Island. I was wondering if that has been dealt with or, or not. Is anybody familiar with that issue? It seemed to have been brought up by the Storybook Island group before mm -hmm. us, and I see it was reported in the minutes, so I'm not quite sure someone can look into that. Well, we, well, we have Jerry Cole look into that, or Robert Ellison, they'll get back to you. Is that right, Patty? Okay, we'll, we'll get back to you. I don't think anybody has the answer. Okay, let's go to Alderman Malcolm Chapman. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Just a question uh, for Councilmember Hadcock, if she chooses to answer, just some clarification. When, when you say that you would bring that forward on um, some committee meeting, you're talking about finding that money in the 2009 budget, am I correct? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to Alderwoman Karen Olson. You're in support of the motion? Yep, I'm in support of the motion. Okay, very good. Motion on the floor is for approval. Item number 90, which is approve the lease agreement with the Storybook Island, Inc. Any further discussion? Seeing no further lights, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, motion passes. Item number 91, please. Item number 91 is second reading of ordinance 5518, ordinance amending 17.06 municipal code uh, as requested by Dream Design International, Inc. for a rezoning for medium density residential district, office commercial district, located at 336 Mead Street, move to continue to August 17 at the applicant's request. We have a motion and a second to continue this item to the August 17th City Council meeting at the applicant's request. Is that correct, Marcia? Okay. Any, any discussion on that items? I'm just looking at your notes and for some reason it says deny and continue. I just want to make sure we're doing the right thing here. Planning Commission's recommendation was to deny, however, oh. the applicants requested it be continued to August gotcha. 17th. Okay, very good. I just want to make sure we're doing the right thing. Motion on the floor is continue this item to the August 17th City Council meeting at the applicants' request. Any further discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. 
Opposed. Motion passes. Item number 92, please. Item number 92 is second reading of Ordinance 5526, an ordinance amending 17.06 of the Municipal Code for rezoning from no-use district to heavy industrial district located west of Valley Drive and north of South Dakota Highway 44. And based on the discussion, I would like to offer a motion to continue uh, for 30 days to allow the applicant to bring forward additional information. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay, motion on the floor is to continue this item for 30 days, is that correct? Marsha, I'm gonna go to Marsha Elkins. Could we please do it to a specific council meeting so we don't have to re-advertise? Be the first meeting in September, September, September 8th. 8th. Yep, that's a day after Labor Day. It's a Tuesday. That'd be fine. Okay, is that all right with the seconder? Okay, motion on the floor is to continue this item to the September 8th City Council meeting. Discussion on the continuation motion, please. Let's go to Alderman Ron Weifenbach. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If I recall, this item came in front of the council and was continued previously, or was it a, a committee? Marcia? No, this item was considered uh, on a request to rezone this property to general commercial. The council denied that and directed staff to re-advertise it for consideration as uh, heavy industrial, which is what's before you tonight. Okay, thank you, because th that's the clarification I wanted to make because the council is the ones that directed this to be reconsidered for heavy industrial. So here it comes. <laughs> I don't get it. And somebody can explain to me why we're putting these people through this. I would appreciate it because uh, the, it came through as a, we, as a commercial. We didn't feel that was right for their property. We wanted to be able to clean up the property and continue the use. We obviously didn't want to have them be able to exp span into a lot of different uses. So the only available zoning that we had was heavy industrial with a uh, plan unit development or something attached to it so we could um, kind of make sure that it was used for that that particular purpose and it wasn't changed so and and yet when I I'm the liaison at the Planning Commission and, and uh -huh. I had to bring that up because the, everything else was said to deny it and it was never mentioned that the council had directed at some point for these people to come back and do this uh, I'm not sure how we I can go along with continuing it but I think there needs to be some more information had here and the fact is uh, why we asked them to do that now we're telling them no we don't want to do that or whatever the case may be or, or continuing it or whatever so, I'm, so I hope somebody could shed light for me because the Planning Commission was instructed that basically to deny this in any way shape or form or whatever maybe it's a procedural issue but uh, I didn't quite understand that conversation either after the Council had given the direction for these people to bring this back in this form. Um, so I'm sure that they're quite as confused as I am. So I'm hoping that someone could shed a little light here for us. And if continuing it helps shed that light, then I'll definitely do that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there again, motion on the floor is a continuation motion. So we will speak to the continuation motions, not the merit of the actual proposal. So let's go to Alderwoman Deb Hadcock. Um, just a question for Marsha on the continuation. If we wanted to continue 92, wouldn't we have to continue some of the other ones in order to uh, make it continu contiguous with the heavy industrial, light industrial, so they'd be on the same page? Marsha? If you continue 92, I, I would suggest that you continue a number of these as you suggest, um, 92, 93, 94, 95, and then the related um, comp plan amendments, which are 97, 98, 99, and 100. They're all in the same vicinity and they are uh, interacting. I had indicated this morning at our staff review that uh, I would put some maps together that kind of showed them all together. Those are included in your packet, both in terms of what the future land use committee's recommendations are and the applicant's request. Um, and as you can tell from those, they are very much interrelated. So. Um, my suggestion would be that you would uh, continue all those items mentioned together if that was your intention. If I could, that would be my substitute motion. Can I tell why? I'm sorry? Can, can I tell why I'm doing sure. that? Um, number one is because it went back through the future land use and uh, the planning commission and it'll give time for the applicants to look at what heavy industrial is, show a CTEC drawing at this point of what they're planning uh, to do on their expansion. Um, I think at this point um, it wouldn't hurt us. We're not in any hurry in any way, shape, or form to get this um, approved or disapproved tonight. I think why 
looking at the applicants and meeting with them for the first time, I think um, at this point they have a little bit clear understanding of what's required of some of the heavy industrial, but they need a concept plan, I think, of what they are actually putting in that area, and they don't have that plan at this time, but we're looking uh, for them to do that. So I thought them bringing that forward tonight was a positive instead of just throwing something on a screen saying, I don't think so, this is heavy industrial. So um, that was the reasoning behind it, and the applicant asked um, us to do this if we could. So okay. thank you. And did we get a second on, set, on the second? Can we have a second, please? Second. Okay, we have a substitute motion and a second, and that substitute motion would be to continue items 92, 93, 94, 95, 97, 98, 99, and 100 to the September 8th City Council meeting. Everyone clear on that motion? Okay, additional discussion. There again on the continuation motion only. Let's go to Alderwoman Karen Olson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'll be in support of the continuation motion. When this original motion, when the original motion that can, that moved this item forward was discussed in answer to um, um, Mr. Weifenbach's question about what we were intending. I can't speak for the rest of my colleagues, but the motion that was on the floor was involved, should we um, send it back to look at um, a planned industrial um, development? And that was, the me that was the motion on the floor. And um, I voted in favor of that motion. Uh, mostly because it was the alternative that I had. Um, I thought my real intent in that vote was to secure more information and to give a larger amount of time for future land use and others and myself particularly to go out and take a look at this property. And so um, to try to interpret my intents for Mr. Weiss Weifenbach, that was the reason I supported that particular motion because that was what we had to vote on. And so. But in fact, what my real intent was to acquire additional information, and um, I was prepared to vote this evening, but I will vote, I will support the continuation motion, and I certainly o urge everyone who sat through this meeting to be sure and um, come in the future because this will be discussed, and I know that it's important to your neighborhood. Okay, let's go to Alderman Lloyd LaCroix. Motion on the floor is a second, a substitute motion to continue items 93 through 95 inclusive, 97 through 100 inclusive to the September 8th City Council meeting. Alderman Lloyd LaCroix. Thank you, Mayor. I guess, I, you know, I, I agree with uh, what Alderman Weifenbach had said is, you know, uh, we sent it to him and we needed to do make a decision. And by continuing this on, I really, yeah, I don't see where the change is going to come when, when it's been to the Planning Commission and the future land use. We have the residents here with me, you know, uh, re residents here on this. So, I mean, I'm in support if, if you want to give it some more time, but, uh, you know, we really need to take a look at the people out here and make a decision for them. As he said, you know, the county, he's been working with the co uh, county, hasn't done nothing for years, uh, and we're in the same boat just continuing it on. I think it, at one point we just need to sit down and make, make the decision as hard as it is. You know, I understand it's hard for both parties, but uh, pretty soon we just got to make that decision. Thank you. Thank you. Motion on the floor is substitute motion to continue items 93 through 95 inclusive, 97 through 100 inclusive to the September 8th City Council meeting. Seeing no, no further lights, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> motion passes. Item number 96, please. Item 96 is an appeal to the Planning Commission's decision on a request by Dream Design International, Inc. to consider an application for a planned commercial development uh, located at 336 Mead Street. Uh, this item duplicates uh, 74, so move the table. We have a motion, second to table, no discussion on tabling motions. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, motion passes the bill list. Pauline, what do you have? The original bill list was six million two hundred twenty-three thousand two thirty-seven fifty. We do have three additions for that to Hills Material for the street rehabilitation projects on Harney Drive, Harney Place, and Raymond Drive for four thousand six hundred forty-five dollars and fifty cents. Rapid construction for the Sixth Street Water Main to Franklin, Franklin to St. Charles for two thousand eight hundred twenty-five dollars, and Simon Contractors for the street rehabilitation project for Brooke and Nicole for $980 for a total of $6,231,688. Okay, 
Okay, the motion and the second to approve the bill list as amended for a total of $6,231,688 in no sense. In no sense. Okay, everyone clear on the motion. You rounded it, didn't you? <laughs> Wait till the audit comes. Yeah. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed. Motion passes. Mr. Green, do we have an executive session? We do, and it would be for the purposes permitted by SDCL 1 25 2. We have a motion and a second to go in executive session for the purposes permitted by SDCL 1 25 2. In discussion on that motion. Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We're in executive session. Thank you, everyone.
Okay, can we have a motion to come out of executive session? So moved. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? We're out of executive session. Mr. Green. Thank you, Mayor. I'd ask the council to authorize the city attorney's office to negotiate uh, or attempt to negotiate a settlement in the Big Sky matter for the next 60 days. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to direct staff to try and negotiate an agreement with Big Sky in the, within the next 60 days. In discussion on that motion, Alderman of the Court, do you want to abstain? Yes. Okay, very good. Any additional discussion? Any additional discussion? Seeing no further lights, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Mr. Green. Thank you, Mayor. I'd ask the Council to direct the City Attorney's Office to refuse to accept any subdivision surety from Mr. Estes or any entity that he has an ownership interest in pending the resolution of the Big Sky litigation. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that motion? Alderman of the Court, did you wish to abstain? Yes. Okay, very good. We'll so note. And Amber, could you please note on the previous vote that Alderman <laughs> the Court abstained? Okay, any further discussion on that motion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion and a second. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none. Whoop, Alderman. Oh, do you really want to go there? Okay, Aaron <laughs> Costello. I think it's a good idea. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that wasn't debatable. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, motion passes.